Hey guys, <laughs> David Essel with you here. We're doing our online radio show live on Facebook Live right now. Welcome aboard. So glad to have you with us. You know, it's been 27 years now, 27 years that we started in talk radio. And what we do every week is we answer your questions from around the country. Technology is amazing. I can sit here in my office, comfortable as can be, and we are being broadcasted all over the world right now. So welcome aboard. If you want to, during the show, you can try to ask questions. I've got a ton of them that have already come in via text and email. We're going to be rocking and rolling. We talk about sex. We talk about relationships, um, supplementation for brain chemistry, divorce, how to make more money, how to be happier and healthier in life. And I want to welcome everyone from around the world right now joining us. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, thank you very much. If you're watching us or listening to us live on the radio, we want to welcome you aboard. We're going to start right off here. When the very first one and the very question is going to be out of New York City, um, listen to you recently on a broadcast here in New York. You talked about stress. I feel stress every day, especially first thing in the morning. Ideas to cope would be so great. And then in parentheses, it's not living in New York. I feel this way everywhere, which is just perfect. All right, number one is in order to reduce stress, you've got to write about it. You know, you, you can't process. Imagine this. You're trying to deal with stress, lots of stuff going on all over your world, and you're keeping it in your head like a dog is chasing its tail. Do you ever think about that? It's like you cannot process via thinking. Our thought processes are not so powerful that we can, for most of us, that we can sort out what's going on in our life and make really healthy decisions. So number one, write about it. We have found in our practice 27 years as a counselor, 27 years as a life coach, that when you write about it, you decrease the stress volume by about 50%. Now think about that. A 50% reduction just through processes in, in writing. So that's my first tip. Second tip, when you're waking up in the morning and you're feeling like that, have lavender by your bedside, the essential oil of lavender. Lavender is amazing. Within about 30 seconds, five deep inhalations of the, and now it must say 100% essential oil, and 100% essential oil of lavender in about 60 seconds after deep breathing five times, just five times, you'll see an instant reduction in the volume of stress. So number one, we're writing everything out. A, and as a matter of fact, I'd even say when you go to bed, have you ever heard of a God box? You know, that God box where you have your notes that's stressing you and you put it in your God box and then you let it go. That is an excellent opportunity for you to be able to decrease your levels of stress. So number one is going to be writing. Number two is going to be essential oil of lavender. Number three, get professional help. Always get professional help. Here on our radio show, God, we've been doing this for 27 years. This is the first, actually the second show that we've done live on Facebook, and we welcome everybody aboard. But if you still are dealing with a lot of stress, and these little tips I give you are just the starting point, make sure you're working with a minister, a priest, a counselor, make sure you're working with a life coach, get out of your own way, make the commitment, you're going to be so happy you did. I want to welcome everyone on Facebook, God, we've got people from all over the world listening online, and right now on Facebook, welcome aboard to everyone that's taken the time to be with David Essel Alive, America's positive radio talk show. We started it in 1990. My very first show was in a tiny little city in Venice, Florida, right outside of Sarasota, Florida. We had three listeners. Two of them were over 90, and uh, I don't know, the other one was probably like 88. <laughs> With three listeners when I first started 27 years ago. And since that time, we've gone international just having an absolute ball. So thank you so much for being with us. Um, all right, this, the next question is coming from Fort Myers, Florida, my, where I live right now, as a matter of fact. Husband and I are challenged raising our six-year-old daughter. How would you handle fear of monsters at night? This is a big one. All right, let me tell you the number one mistake parents make in regards to raising children when there's fears, especially at that age, the number one mistake we make is by discounting their fears. So what does the average parent do? Oh, honey, there's nothing there. Look, we just looked underneath the bed. There's nothing there. Look, we just opened up the closet and put the light on. See, there's no monsters. Go back to bed. Stop bothering us. We're having sex. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? So we say, no, that's the exact worst thing to do. The best thing in the world to do is to ask your child to talk more about it. I'm so sorry that you feel 
scared at night. I'm so sorry that you feel uncomfortable in the dark. Tell me about it. Tell mommy about it. Tell daddy about it. What is it that makes you so afraid, honey? Validate their fears. Don't discard them. Imagine this. You're talking to your partner or a best friend, and you're saying to them, God, I'm really nervous about taking this new job. What does the average person say? Oh my God, don't worry about it. You're going to do great. You're going to do amazing. You're not listening to them. Now, we do the same thing with kids. And kids know you're not listening to them. When you say to them, oh, don't worry about it. We checked it out. It's not there. That means nothing to them. Just like if your best friend says to you, oh, don't worry. You're going to do great in your new job. That doesn't do anything to help us. The best friend should be saying to you, tell me what you're nervous about in the new job. Why are you so anxious? What are you afraid might happen? Are you prepared? Is there something else you can do that would help alleviate your fears? So you ask the child the same thing. Is there something you can do? Is there something mommy can do or daddy can do that would make you feel less afraid of the dark, of the monster that you feel is underneath the bed or the monster you think is in the closet? What can we do about that? You know, engage them, right? Get them engaged instead of diminishing their fears. Hey, for everyone that just tuned in, you are tuned in to David Essel Live, America's Positive Radio Talk Show. If you want to text us during the show, 941-266-7676. You can private message us on Facebook right here during the show. You can put a statement up underneath my little picture right here. We will try to get to everyone's, but I want to tell you in advance, we have hundreds of individuals that have written in for this show already that listen to this show on a weekly basis, and we're going to try to get to as many calls or emails and texts as we can, okay? David Essel Alive. Our website is talkdavid.com. Thank you very much, everyone on Facebook who's joining us right now. Everyone from around the world that's listening, we welcome you as well. Um, the next, this is out of Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, on a radio show in New England, David, you said that the law, oh, this is a big one. <laughs> this is massive. The law of attraction works better with negative thinking than positive thinking. Please explain. Oh, this might rattle some cages, but let me tell you, I believe this for a, a number of years. When we talk about the power of law of attraction with negativity, the law of attraction is more powerful with your negative thought processes than with your positive ones. What does that mean to you? So when we think about it, if you have anxiety, if you are worrying, and you worry and think about all the things that could go wrong in your relationship, with money, with your health, with your career, if you continue to think about those things, they are going to explode. They're going to take over your life. You're going to have a trouble sleeping. You might start leaning on food, alcohol, nicotine, TV to try to escape those feelings, right? But the more you think about all the stuff that could go wrong, the law of attraction goes absolutely insane. It loves it. It brings more and more of those negative, worrisome thoughts, right? But it doesn't work the same with positive thinking. You can have all the positive thoughts in the world, but the minute you let those positive thoughts go, unless you've been doing this for like 20 years, they're not building up. They're not coming back. They're not, does that make sense to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like the law of attraction says that whatever we think about, we bring about, but it's not true when it comes to positive thinking, unless you've been doing it for like 20 years in a row. The person that has been working really hard on their attitude for 20 years, it will then manifest itself. It will then, when you think a positive thought, 10 minutes later, another positive thought comes into your mind, 10 minutes later, but that's rare. The law of attraction works more effectively with negative thinking. So when you have a negative anxious thought and you don't take care of it, you don't change your lifestyle, you don't reach out for help, you don't do something different, another negative thought comes, then another, a worry, an anxiety. We exaggerate our problems. All of a sudden, all we're thinking about is all that isn't working. Does that make sense? But it doesn't happen that easily with positive thinking, does it? So when I was in Boston recently doing the show that this person is referring to, and I was sharing this with the guy or the host, the host flipped out. She goes, oh my God, David, I've never heard it explained like that. Like, that's why it's so easy to become a worry word. That's why it's so easy to be, have a negative attitude or after a number of years of where your negative thoughts explode. They continue to build. They grow. But the positive thoughts, interesting. It doesn't happen as easily. So what's the answer? Oh, my God. The answer is really simple. Get help. 
<laughs> don't try. If you've had a negative, anxious life up for till now, if you've had a lot of challenges in your life, you are probably not going to be able to shatter that negative mindset, that monkey mind, the dog chasing its tail. You're not going to be able to shatter it on your own. Please get help. But I hope I explained why the law of attraction is much more powerful with your negative thought processes than your positive ones. Now, it doesn't mean you can't become a more positive thinker, and it doesn't mean you can't eventually turn that over to where positive thoughts become more regular than negative. It's going to take a lot of work. You're tuned in to David Essel Alive. So glad to have you with us. Everyone on the radio, everyone on Facebook Live right now, let your friends and family know, and feel free to share this information on your walls so more people can get the answers to questions that are bothering everyone. The questions that we have right now that I'm going through are coming from all over the United States. Let's see where the next one is. Uh, this is out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ending a divorce. On a YouTube video, you say, wait one year, I do, before dating seriously. I just met an amazing man, why should I wait? This is out of Pittsburgh. So why should someone wait, right? So you get divorced and you think you're great, you got everything together and you meet someone absolutely stunning and you're not ready for a serious relationship. Most people that leave a relationship, divorce or no divorce, and they immediately jump into another one like this person from Pittsburgh wants to do, it's not gonna work. And I'm gonna tell you why we say to wait a year. Number one, you've gotta figure out what your role was in the dysfunction of your last relationship in writing. Now, you might say, I didn't have a role, I was perfect, which we know is absolute crap, <laughs> if you want to be honest with yourself. Maybe your role was the fact that you stayed in the relationship too long. That's not a small role. Maybe you're codependent and you were afraid to rock the boat and one or two times you said, hey honey, you know, I think your drinking's a little out of control, or hey honey, I think your spending is really putting us in a jam again, or hey, you know, I, I, I'm asking you to do these things around the house and you're saying you will, but you never will, and you know, maybe you're not setting boundaries and consequences, so you just go along with the flow in the relationship until you can't handle it anymore. Well, listen to this. Whatever your role was in the dysfunction of your last relationship, if you don't take the time to heal it, to look at it, to take a really strong internal look at what you did wrong in your last relationship, the odds are, gang, you're gonna do it all over again. The odds are you're gonna repeat the same stuff you did with the last person with the next one. So we say this, take a year off, get to know yourself again, go through the seasons, the holidays, the birthdays without a partner, Get solid of being a single woman or a single man who loves themselves. Release alcohol and sugar and all the things we use to numb our emotions. Get away from all this television and all this nonsense radio unless it's David Essel Alive. <laughs> really get clear about you loving yourself again. And it can easily take a year. Own up to your responsibilities in the relationship that failed. Fall in love with yourself again. Give yourself time to breathe. Find those hobbies you may have dropped. Get back into the gym if you stop that. Grab some great friends. Get to know yourself again. It's going to take at least a year. And then you'll be ready to select a perfect partner. And you will be the perfect partner moving forward. Does that make sense? You're tuned in to David Essel Live, America's Positive Radio Show. It's so cool that we can do the radio show and also be live on Facebook. I absolutely love this. Whoever created Facebook Live, probably Mark, right? Thank you very much for being such a powerful part of getting these positive messages out into the world. For 27 years, we've been on the air doing this work. And now, not only are we on radio, at this very moment that I'm on Facebook Live, but we're able to reach millions upon millions of people. Thank you so much for tuning in. Before I go to the next question that came in, I wanna remind you guys, we have a $3,000 David Essel's Life Coach Giveaway Program, a sweepstakes going on right now. Yesterday, I was on the Jenny McCarthy Show with Jenny and her studios, and I will tell you something, it's exploding. You could win, go to talkdavid.com. It costs nothing to sign up, and you could win a $3,000 thousand dollar life coach package with me i'm going to work with you six straight months no pennies out of your pocket 
And plus, there's other things that you can win. So go right now, talkdavid.com. Sign up for our $3,000 Life Coach Sweepstakes, okay? All right, next one. Uh, where is this coming from? This is out of Sarasota, Florida. Welcome to all of our Sarasota people. Um, I have a great idea for a movie. I want to write a screenplay. How does one begin? Oh, my God, let me tell you this great story. So a number of years ago, this young man came to me, and he said, Hey, David, I've been in film for a number of years. I've been behind the camera for a number of years. I've traveled the world as a cameraman. I've done all kinds of incredible stuff, but I want to move it up to the next level. I want to actually write a screenplay. I've got some great ideas on how to write screenplays, but I want you to help me. So I guided him. Even though I've never written a screenplay before, I've written tons of books. So I said to him, let's use the format that I use when I teach people how to write books. And I got him to a certain level. He was ecstatic. He worked his ass off, by the way. He was ecstatic. His screenplay's coming together, but we reached a point where I couldn't help him. So for our, 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 our texter from Sarasota, Florida, I'm going to tell you the same thing. When I got him to that level, then this is what I said. You don't gamble with writing a book or doing a screenplay and try to pull it off on your own get into a course. You know, a buddy of mine out of Las Vegas called me last week. He wants to do the same thing. I'm giving him the same advice that I gave this person. So he went to New York City. He took a course online on how to write screenplays. He got so excited with the online course. He went to New York City and he signed up into, I think it was a six-month program on how to write screenplays, and he's off to the races. The moral of the story, no matter what huge goal you have, the bigger the goal the more help you're going to need from the outside world, not just you. Okay, so take that to the bank. Amen to this. You're tuned in to David Essel Alive, America's positive radio talk show. 27 years on the air. And now, once or twice a week, we're able to bring parts of our show right here on Facebook Live. I think I have time for one or two more questions. I'm going to get to them right now. Glad to have you with us. Our website, talkdavid.com. Uh, this next, this is on Nebraska. We never hear from people in Nebraska. This is fantastic. Um, oh, how did you get your first book published? Oh my God, what, th this is amazing. So I never believed, like most of us, you know, I never believed I had the gifts or the talent to become an author. Never in a thousand years did I believe I had the gift or a talent. But I would write every day and I would just put this stuff away. One day, a friend of mine was visiting. I went in to take a shower. I came back out. She's sitting on my couch, tears streaming down her face. As, and she looks up, and I go, oh, my God, I can make a woman cry while I'm in the shower? <laughs> David Essel, that's not good. And I looked at her, and I said, what's going on? She goes, I'm reading your writings. I said, what writings? She goes, these are so moving. And I looked down. She actually had my diary that no one was ever supposed to read. So I looked up and I said, where'd you get that? She said, it was underneath the couch. And then she looked at me and she said, David, this needs to become a book. Now, I'm going to tell you something really important. Up until that moment, the only thing I knew I was good at was being an athlete and a jock and all these. I never thought I had a creative bone in my body. Those were beliefs I picked up from myself and society when I was a little kid. All of a sudden, I have someone validating my writing skills. From there, I went out and I started shopping, the, and this was back around 1993, 94, before I even knew about literary agents. And I would go on and I was shopping my manuscript for the book to all these publishers. We got a small publisher out of New England to pick up the book, and then just before they were going to publish it, they went out of business, and I had to then self-publish. But it was the greatest introduction to the world of publishing. The moral of this story... Whatever you have passion for and you're sitting on, stop sitting on it. Your dreams, if you're not actively going after your dreams, do one of two things. As you're watching me, make a decision today to start writing the book, to start clearing up the people you need to forgive who have hurt you, to start losing weight. Whatever your dreams are, you have two choices today. You either actively start working on them or drop them. Actively start working on your dreams or let them go. Quit talking about them. You're wasting your energy. You're wasting your time. That might be kind of a hard-ass response for me to give to people, but I'm dead serious. Start acting on those dreams. If you deserve them and you know in your heart and soul that you deserve to achieve your goals that you have, then you have to act on them. If you're not acting, you're telling yourself, I 
don't deserve it. Comprende? Hey, you're tuned in to David Essel Live. We're going off of Facebook Live right now. You can catch all of my archive shows at our website, talkdavid.com. Go to talkdavid.com. Right at the top, there's a little link that says David's Radio Show. You can listen to thousands of hours of David Essel Live. And I know you're dying to do that. <laughs> you can listen to thousands of hours of our past archive shows. And every week on Facebook Live, we're going to be bringing you a little smidgen of the shows we're doing currently to give you a feel of what positive talk radio is all about, okay? I love you guys. I'm so glad that you've been with me. Also, don't forget our $3,000 Life Coach Program Sweepstakes Giveaway is going on right now. Go to talkdavid.com, sign up. You might win with me a $3,000 Life Coach Program, no charge at all. Plus, there's other gifts to win too, okay? so. I'm going to tell you guys, I love you all. Continue to be strong. Continue to be powerful. Get engaged. Go to talkdavid.com. You're going to find out all kinds of cool stuff there, okay? I want to help you. We'll be back with this radio show on Facebook Live soon. Share it to your pages. Take this video and share it so people can get all of this help that we're giving to the world. We're sending out all of this love to the world. And I want you to take care of yourself, okay? David Essel, talkdavid.com. Bingo! Have a great, great day.